Let's say good morning now to Dr. Crutchfield. Dr. Crutchfield, good morning. Welcome to the radio. How are you doing this morning, sir? Good morning. Happy uh, rainy Monday morning. Yeah, you know, it kind of, you know, flies in the, in the face of this. I should point out, Dr. Uh, Crutchfield is a dermatologist. Is that, am I saying that right, or a doctor of dermatology? Correct. Board certified dermatologist. Okay, that's the, that's the bigger deal here. And I, 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 I kind of like the fact that you're a local guy. That you grew up here and um, in, in actually over in my neighborhood where you first went to school and stuff and in uh, that part of South Minneapolis. So it makes it, you know, more of a bond. And Christine Clayberg, the uh, meteorologist from Fox 9, is in the studio with us this morning as well. Good morning. Good morning. And I've got a couple of questions for you. This is the month of May is, I believe, Skin Cancer Awareness Month. Yes, it is. And along with that comes Melanoma um, Awareness. And I'm, they're related, correct? Correct. Okay, so why is it, first of all, why do you figure it's the month of May that they, that they pop this in here? Is it because we're coming into the summertime when people need to be more aware of this? I think that's it, absolutely, because right now people are thinking about vacationing, going to uh, sunny climates, thinking about sunscreen, sun protection, going to the beach, things like that. So now's the time to be aware of it. It's good to think of it year-round, but now's a special time to bring it to the front of the mind so you can protect the skin. Okay, now here's a question I have, though. It seems lately in the news, and Christine and I were talking about this before you joined us this morning, about you hear about these cases of melanomas and, and, and such that just, bam, grow, come out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, you've got, you know, uh, the, the, the death of a loved one or someone we know. And is this, like, on the rise? Is, this, is there a greater increase in this? Or, or, or what is happening here? Well, there's great debate uh, whether or not melanoma is on the rise. But when you're talking about skin cancers in general, skin cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer of all malignancies. The most common is one called basal cell. The second most common, and basal cell occurs about a million cases in the United States a year. The second most common is squamous cell. That occurs about a quarter of a million times per year in the United States. And the least common but the most deadly of all is melanoma. And that's diagnosed about 40,000 times in the United States. Basal cells rarely metastasize. Squamous cells the mortality rate is about five to ten percent, but melanoma, the malignant—I mean, the uh, death rate—is about thirty percent, and it affects young people, and it can kill you and kill you fast. Wow. Okay. Now, the, see, now, now I, this is, becomes a concern because, like, is this a, uh, a scare thing? Let me ask this question because Christine was saying, now you're always very fair skin, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. And do you, so? Do you avoid the sun? I, you know, I do. I wear hats and stuff all the time, a really high protection sunblock all the time. But I actually have a question because I notice, and I was wondering when you mentioned this about May, I get fried if I do not get a little bit of sun, you know, and I have friends that do this too. Before they go on vacation, they'll go to the tanning booth once or twice because it will keep them from getting cooked, which I'm sure is not a good plan. But then I've heard that you're more susceptible to skin cancer if you have a significant burn event. Like two significant burn events makes you more susceptible. So how does that all fit together? Okay, here's the bottom line on that. When it comes to tanning, all tans are bad. In fact, the only time your body produces a tan is when your DNA has been fractured and cut by ultraviolet radiation. It's kind of like sending out the lifeboats. You have little packets of color that your cells release when the DNA is cut to protect and block it like an umbrella. So no tan is a safe tan. I'm a realist. I say just be sun smart. Use the appropriate sunscreens, and it's got to have an SPF of 15 or higher, and more importantly, UVA protection. Most sunscreens have both of those now. Mm -hmm. And the way you do it is you put it on 30 minutes before you go out in the sun because it takes 15 to 20 minutes to set up and work appropriately. Oh, I did not know that. I see people sitting in their lawn <laughs> chair and then smearing it on. They're laying on the beach. They get their water out. They get then you put the sunblock on. on. And then finally, 15 or 20 minutes into it, then they put it on. It's going to take another 15 or 20 minutes to work. So that's really a nice pearl, a nice tip. Put it on 30 minutes before you go out. And the recommendations now are to reapply it every hour when you're out in the sun and more frequently if you're either actively perspiring and or swimming. The other thing that I really like, because you can put it on once and you can forget about it, is sun protective clothing. And there are great companies out there that make clothing with a real tight weave to block out the sun. But it's ultralight and vented. They've got hats. They've got stuff for kids. All kinds of great stuff as far as sun protective clothing. So I use those two together. Right. Does it make that much of a difference, the sun protective? Because it all looks dorky. <laughs> no, no. The, hey, the, I mean, like right, regular, can I wear stuff, regular clothes? You know, the old <laughs> stuff really, really looked dorky, but the new stuff that's come out in the last couple of years is really, really nice. Um, 
The other thing that you mentioned about multiple burns, when you're talking about skin cancer, the first two that I mentioned, the basal cell and squamous cell, is related to chronic or long-time sun exposure. I mean, people that, that grow up work, working as lifeguards, people that work mm. on roofing crews or road crews or park rangers, things like that. But multiple burns, that relates to the risk of melanoma. So if you've had mm. three or more blistering sunburns, your risk goes up. There are other risks, too, like family history, skin type. Blonde hair, red hair, blue eyes, things like that, personal history. But blistering sunburns is, increases your risk for melanoma. The other thing too, that's really important about sun protection, most people get 75% of their lifetime sun exposure by the time they're 21. So it's kind of a cruel hoax. By the time you're really wise enough and mature enough to protect yourself, you've already had a whopping dose. And to me, it's so funny. I'll, wow. I'll, I'll have a 90-year-old patient, and we, I've taken off a skin cancer. She comes the next day with her bottle of sunscreen. She's ready to go, and I say, good for you. <laughs> the main, the thing, so if you're a parent, really start working on your kids and teaching them. And you can start putting sunscreens on after six months. And before that, just make sure the kids are covered. Well, let's talk about this. Uh, can I get you to hold over for a break this morning, doctor? My pleasure. Talking, uh, talking with Dr. Charles Crutchfield, whose practice, by the way, is in Egan. And uh, if I got that right, right? You got it right. I live in Egan and I work in Egan. Okay, let me put you on hold. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back with some more questions and maybe some more myths. Royce. Eight twenty-four. We got a few minutes more here with Dr. Charles Crutchfield from uh, Crutchfield Dermatology. And by the way, you can get details in uh, crutchfielddermatology.com. Doctor, welcome back to the radio. Thanks. Appreciate your being on with us this morning. Let me ask a question here. Let's go through some some. You tell me if they're myths or not. And I just don't see this here. But we've always heard you can get just as you know sunburned or whatever as much sun damage through the clouds as you can through a clear sky. Uh, partially true. You certainly can get sunburn through clouds and also in the winter off the snow reflection. It's not quite as intense as a cloudless sky, but you definitely can. So partially true, absolutely. Okay. So, and you mentioned earlier, too, that we've done most of the sun damage to our skin by the time we're, we're 21 years of age or so? Yes. So do I need to be less careful now at my, my age? I'm 53. No, because what happens is there's a certain critical point, and everybody, the critical point is different. So once you hit that point, then you really are prone to developing skin cancers. So oh, you might no. be close to the point after age 21, but the sun you get after that can certainly affect it. So you need to always be sun smart. Oh, great. Darn. Because I, I'm not. <laughs> well, I, I, it's, it's not a get-out-of-jail-free card. Okay, I was hoping... <laughs> always I... be sun smart. i tell you another thing, too, that uh, in the olden days, and I, I still support dermatologists that say this, they always say, well, stay out of the sun from 10 to 3. But I know people that, that are in the winter, they're going down to Mexico and Hawaii, Who's going to stay in their hotel room from 10 to 3? I mean, it's just yeah. not going to happen. So I really like to push and be sun smart. Use the appropriate use of sunscreens and sun protective clothing. I was not aware of that. Does it say in the, even on the directions on these products to apply it a half an hour before you go out? Some might. Uh, and I think they're catching on now, and they should if they don't. But at least the listeners know now that's the way you use it. Okay, another question. And I was, Christine and I were talking about this. Uh, Christine Clayberg, who has uh, uh, been around a bit in terms of, you know, some sun spots, some sunny places, mm -hmm. as well as not only the Twin Cities in the summertime, but LA and, and South uh, America. South America. Actually, I have a question brewing after you. All it's right. in the queue now, okay? Okay. Uh, my question goes to this um, dark complexion. I'm a darker complected person to begin with. Mm -hmm. So do I have less risk? than uh, of, Christine. of melanoma, yeah, than, than our fair-haired uh, Christine here. Uh, slightly re less risk, but even diff when you're talking about different hues of skin, even dark chocolate brown skin uh, affords only an SPF of about 8 to 10. So it's not mm. that great because we recommend a minimum of 15. In fact, I'm African-American, and my grandfather's African-American. He just had a skin cancer removed not too long ago. So it affects everyone. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. Always be smart. Always sun protect. Okay, that's good to know. What's your question? Is it true that sunblock loses half of its effectiveness in the first six months? Oh, that it's sitting on the shelf, you mean? Yeah, because I was climbing a big tall mountain in South America, and that was a big deal. It was like new sunblock because you really need like all the effectiveness. But I, I was a little skeptical. Is that, is that true? Do you I know? It, I mean, if I you buy the giant bottle and it sits for a year, are you... I think it depends on the product. You certainly should not use the same sunscreen from the season before. So you should definitely change it yearly. And if there's any question at all, it's cheap 
cheap, cheap insurance. Get it every six months. Wow. That's... It's so much cheaper in the big bottle, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really slather it on, too, yeah. and get out there and, and redo this. Hey, I got to just say a, a very simple thank you so much for the information. Yeah. I want to remind everybody, too, by the way, that he practices in Egan, the same place where he lives, crutchfielddermatology.com. You can get all the additional information about Charles Crutchfield and... Um, and, and and to me, I mentioned this before you joined us, a local guy, and I uh, admire that because you, know, you can actually tailor a lot of your information for where and how we live here in the Twin Cities area. I'm a Minnesota kid. That's all. That's it's enough for me, Doc. <laughs> hey, hey, no, hey, quick side question here now. How do I? Where do I? What do I look for when I'm doing these like self examinations? Uh, especially as we're talking about this, this is Skin Cancer Awareness Month, and it should be an ongoing thing. But we set aside this month for this. What am I looking for? This is great, and I think this is an appropriate uh, question to close on. See, I tell patients if you uh, notice moles changing at all, size, color, or shape, or spots that bleed without provocation. Some people say, well, every time I use my razor and shave this area, it bleeds. That doesn't count. But if you're washing your face with a cotton washcloth and a spot starts bleeding, so changing spots or bleeding spots, if you mind those two rules, you'll catch 99% of all skin cancers. And what I like to tell my patients and anyone listening is see spot, see spot change, see a dermatologist. Okay. Ah, it's like kind that. of back to basics, sort of the, that, that primer just like that. So, doctor, thank you very, very much. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. Hey, we'll see you around the neighborhood, I hope. Okay. All right. Dr. Charles Crutchfield from Crutchfield Dermatology. You can hook up with him at crutchfielddermatology.com.